We're going to be going through a Q&A with questions that someone submitted via email about the video that I published recently where I talked about how I got a distinction in my master's degree in psychology. So this was a conversion course, master's degree, um, that took me from having a science background into psychology. And this person had a few questions as to whether or not they should do it full time or part time and a few other things. And I think this would be relevant to anyone who's thinking about doing that type of course. So if that's your kind of thing, or you're planning to do it, or you're registered and haven't started yet, this might be useful to you, so stick around. My name is Marios. I'm an intellectual property manager working in London and a recent graduate in psychology. First question was, did I go part-time or full-time? So I did mine part-time and my course was actually three years because I had a foundation course first. So I did a foundation course, then first year of master's degree part-time, and then second year master's degree part-time. I chose part-time very deliberately because I was working full-time, nine to five, uh, five days a week. And I just wasn't sure how I would adapt to it uh, or if it would really work for my lifestyle. So I was testing the water and playing it safe, doing it part-time. I'm not sure this will always make a difference for you uh, money-wise. For me, what made a money difference was doing the foundation year, which is additional year of term fees. Um, but if I'd done the full-time master's degree, so years one and two, that still would have cost me the same amount. So I thought I'm spending the same money, I'm getting the same contact hours and all that stuff. Um, so I'd rather have a better quality of life and actually enjoy the process by doing part-time and not going too intense. You may have other reasons that you wanna go full-time, but we'll go into that later. How many hours was I actually at university? So during term time, we did six hours of lectures, which is normally two lectures, so two days. One day was three hours, then another day was three hours. And normally one of those uh, research methods would be a, a lab, would include a lab afterwards. So that was another two hours, but might be a little bit shorter sometimes. Okay, so how much independent study did I do? How long was I in the library? All that kind of stuff. So I'd say this varied per year. So the foundation year, I think, was quite intense. I tried to take it very seriously because the reason it was really valuable to do a foundation year was because it introduced you to statistics, which is a really important uh, component of doing a psychology degree. And I hadn't had much exposure to that in my first degree. Um, so I really wanted to get that sorted first and then move on to year one. We did also have people who joined the master's degree part-time in the first year. So we did foundation year, they joined in the first year and they struggled because they hadn't done that foundation in statistics. So usually they'll say, you don't have to do the foundation course if you have a background in statistics to some degree, it doesn't have to be big. Um, but some people really struggled uh, even though they were accepted uh, with the experience that they'd already had. So I would take that uh, element of your course quite seriously, regardless of whether or not you're, you're doing the foundation course. I probably relaxed more in the first and second years, other than for the second year where the research component was part of it. Uh, and we'll talk about why that's important a little bit later. I'd say when it comes to study hours and how much independent study you're gonna do, don't focus so much on how much you're doing, but how much you need to do and doing it in the most effective way. So for me, sometimes that was just sitting in the library the rest of the evening and just doing as much as I could with that time because I knew I wasn't gonna do anything else with my night and I was already on campus. If you're not sure about how many study hours you need to dedicate to the course, you probably wanna go through your student handbook. They'll give you a guide. That's not necessarily what you should stick to and it's not the case that when you dedicate you know, five hours, you always get the equivalent amount of value out of those five hours. You could do as much work in half an hour or 45 minutes if you do it effectively, or you could do it in 12 hours if you're not effective. So I'd focus more on your effectiveness and getting the right stuff done at the right times, rather than thinking, well, I have to sit in the library for this many hours a week, etc. So we'll talk a little bit more about strategy, um, possibly in another video, because we've got other questions to go into. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, drop it in the comments, or if you have any more questions. And there was a question around my work hours. So my work hours were 95, I mentioned earlier, but I would say also that it was quite difficult because I just started a new job in an industry that I didn't have much experience in, and it was quite a tough job. Um, I, need to I needed to learn a lot to get to grips with it. Um, so I think the choice of going part-time was a really good one for me. And if I had been going full-time before that, I certainly would have switched. Even though the university I went to, Birkbeck, does all of their lectures at night. So in theory, you could do both, but full-time work and full-time study, like there's no way you're gonna enjoy both of those. There was a comment from this person saying that they also wanted to achieve a distinction and they were thinking maybe they're being overconfident or spreading themselves too thin. I would say, honestly, for the vast majority of people, it's achievable. I think that's generally the the case with academia, if you work hard and you and you work smart, 
and you understand what the course is requiring of you and what your marking criteria are going to be, then you're, you have a good chance if you're going to put in the work. So I wouldn't obsess too much about the label or like the achievement itself of gaining a distinction because yes it might be important if you're going down another academic route like you're going into PhD or something like that. Um, maybe some jobs are quite strict about what um, grades they need for, for them to accept you but for the most part people forget about that when you have an accredited um, degree in psychology accredited by the BPS the British Psychological Society, that's enough, like as long as you're doing well. Um, I wouldn't say don't aim for that. Of course, it's great to aim for, for, for high grades. Um, I just say focus more on the shorter term goals and objectives of the course, like this quarter, what coursework do I have to submit, what essays, that kind of stuff. And don't obsess too much that at the end of it, you need to get a distinction. It's nice to be driven by a goal, but it's the system that's going to help you more. So I'll probably do more videos around what systems I used to do well in the course whilst working. I did it in my original video, which I'll link um, on how to get a distinction while, while working part time. Um, I could do another one specifically around doing this for psychology and what tips and tricks you can do to help you along that way. So let me know if that's interesting. Another question this person had is whether they should go part time or full time on this course. Um, I think both are achievable if you have the right life circumstances. In their case, they're working four days a week, nine to five, um, and would need to go in twice a week to university if it was full time, one day a week if it was part time. If I'm on it, I don't want to bias you with what I would do, but for me, it really worked out well going part time. So I would recommend it. I would also recommend it because I think it's more enjoy enjoyable and you can begin applying things a bit more quickly. Also, you get to understand more the market that you might want to go into. So if you have a clear career trajectory, that's cool, but you don't know which job entries are going to be available. So having your eyes open for a year or two whilst you're on the course and applying, getting your name out there, um, just creating a presence for yourself is going to be much more effective than saying, all I'm going to do is study for this one year and do really well and get the diploma and then you're like well now I've got to find a job and uh, so but it doesn't always work out like that you never know what's going to happen in the future so I would make it more about your quality of life are you going to enjoy doing these two things at the same time because doing one either of them at one time may be enjoyable doing them at the same time too intensely means you're spreading yourself too thin you're not going to be able to focus on family friends if you have a relationship if you just want to have downtime, like that kind of stuff is really going to take a back seat if you're doing two things full time. Um, you may want to, I'm not putting you off doing full time, if you really want to get it done and dusted and you'll feel more relieved if you just have it out the way. But I'd say what's the rush? If there is a reason to rush, then go for it. If you really feel like you need to get to that end point sooner. Um, there was some comment about age. I kind of, again, uh, it's all relative. Um, what one year of your life is not going to make that much of a difference and you might even do more in two years because you've given yourself some space in the part-time model to kind of do other things like write a blog um, just submit something to a journal article a website on psychology just like a think piece something that will get your name out get you practicing so what i'm saying is you could actually get a lot more out of going part-time that's just my preference if you want to go full-time i'm sure there are some reasons that you'd want to do that um, I do think one really good thing about going full time is basically your schedule is made for you. You can't work around it. So what that does is mean discipline. You need it, but it kind of goes out the window because it's like you either run or you fail, right? If you're doing pretty much a full time job and a full time master's degree, you have your weekly timetable set for that whole year. You know, there's no ifs, ands or buts. If you want to get a good grade, if you just want to pass, then maybe you can have, you know, you can be a bit looser. But if not, then you're, you're, you're probably going to be signing yourself up for a year of dedication to both those things if you want to do both of them well. And you also have to consider you're going to have to perform well at your job too. So expecting that much of yourself is a bit much. So, OK, sorry, like I try not to be biased, but I guess I guess you can tell which one I would choose. Um, and I was certainly happy with my choice. So I hope that was helpful. So this person also asked if there were any other tips that I might give uh, for them to do well in this kind of course. Um, I did make a whole other video about this and I can make a few more to be honest, there's loads of other detail we could go into. Um, but a couple of other things I wanted to touch on because I mentioned them earlier. One was the research project in the final year. This is very important because pretty much anything that you apply to after that will ask about this. So it's your dissertation 
or research project. Um, we did a research project. You may do just a literature review or something like that. It does tend to count for more than other modules, but you should check at your uh, university uh, on your course. Um, it should be in your handbook. Um, for me, it was certainly very important. It took up a lot of my time. It was very interesting. And it's the main thing that I highlight when I talk about myself to other people when the MSc is relevant. So if I'm thinking of applying to a PhD and having those conversations, I need for them to know what my topic is and how I did and what I learned in it and stuff like that. There were like some extra skills I picked up on that um, with coding and uh, data manipulation and stuff like that. So that was all super relevant. And I'd say really gear yourself up for doing well in that one because that one is very important. Another thing I mentioned was you should focus more on how you're going to tackle individual tasks rather than thinking about I want a distinction etc or I want a certain grade. I think what that does then is mean that you are very much focused on the system and how you do something rather than this is the specific output that I want. It's cool to have a goal in mind and if you need that extra boost of motivation every so often you'd be like well I want a dis distinction so I'm going to stay the extra hour or I'm going to do a bit more work then that's cool that you uh, rely on that every so often but it's much more important to say well I understand the marking schemes for the essays and when I go through my essay before submitting it, I'm going to check if I want the top grade in each of these criteria, someone who marks in the top bar or classification for this type of essay is going to need to prove they, whatever, they kind of describe it like uh, uses their terms clearly, understands the theoretical concepts, uses evidence well. Um, all that referencing is is kind of basic and all that that will be lower but if you really want to hit the high levels you're going to have to go from level one say basics good references etc etc and they should pretty much give you a path to to get the grade that you want i would as much as possible use the language from the criteria when you are writing your essay so that they can see they can kind of when they look at their marking criteria they can see you've used the word this evidence shows for example when one of the top criteria is that you are evaluating evidence well so it's heavily be inspired by the marking criteria for pretty much anything you have i think that's a really good place to start and then when you start writing you've always got it in mind what is the level that they're expecting of me if i want to get the top grade i think that's a really good tip and really useful um it's good to start it at the beginning. If you've already written it, that's cool. Like just go through it, do your final readings with those criteria in mind and just see if you've done well. For me, I will, another thing I'll say is my MSc was more essay based. Uh, there was a lot of coursework um, as well. But yeah, just make sure the bulk of whatever submittable work that you're gonna do, get make sure you understand what they're expecting of you less about lifting really heavy weights and going in really hard, more about what do you want to see? Ask questions all the time. When they're telling you, we expect this and this from you, you say, is that is this what you mean or that? Like we can do more, I can do more videos about what this means, um, especially when it comes to like statistics, research projects and stuff like that, essays. Um, but I just generally say, be very curious as to how they're gonna assess your work if you care about grades. Um, and once you understand that, then enjoy the process. Enjoy like pick essay questions that you're really interested in. You're doing this in your spare time, essentially. You're sacrificing a lot. So you should make sure that you're actually gonna enjoy this as much as possible. Some of that will be, most of that hopefully will be natural because you've chosen to do this master's degree. Um, but yeah, never lose sight of that. Like you've done this and it's, it's really cool. Hopefully it's gonna make a really positive impact in your life. But if grades are important to you, then you will have to understand the process of them marking your work. Uh, so the better you understand that, the better you're gonna do. So I wanted to say thank you to this person. They did wanna stay anonymous, but it was really helpful for them to send me an email with these questions. It made me feel like I had something to contribute and hopefully help out. It's given me more ideas for videos. So if anyone else out there has questions on this topic or something similar, then just drop them in the comments or drop me an email. It should be on my YouTube channel. Um, and obviously any support for this video and my channel would be really helpful. Thank you, have a good one.